Hello everybody and welcome back to Throttle Grotto. Today we're going to talk about something tragic. We're going to talk about something that affects families of rabbits everywhere. Crack. No, we're not talking about crack the drug. We're talking about crack in the chassis. Um, and I referenced this in one of the earlier episodes. Uh, these cars, I mean, let's face it, they're a 40-year-old unibody car. Uh, they're made with metals that aren't up to the quality that we use in cars today. Uh, like this, the cars today use the, the high strength, super high tensile steel metals. This car is probably made from something they found laying in a field, and melted down and rolled up and stamped into body panels. So it's a, uh, it's a problem that I noticed on on the early cars. I haven't noticed it so much on the later cars like the, the 81 to 84s and I haven't looked inside one of those cars uh, to see what uh, what causes it. But I do know that this car is affected only on one side by this problem. So we're going to fix it. I'm going to show you what I believe is the issue as to why these cars flex at the B-pillar and crack. And I'm going to show you how we go about fixing that. So first of all, I'm going to walk you around the other side of the car so you can see what I'm talking about. Yes, pardon my mess. So these cars routinely, I'll see if I can show you without blinding everybody. So, well, that didn't work very well. Okay. So, if I get a little light on, like right here. Right here you can see that it's got a crack going this way, this way, and right down the body line here. Let's see if I can get this illuminated. There we go. That's a good angle right there. <clears throat> and that is entirely from the body flexing. Um, and this crack had had, it had been there when the car showed up. I'm not sure if it's because of the really terrible job that someone did fixing the rocker panel back in the day. Um, but I've noticed it on a couple of these early cars and I, I think that I know why this happens. So here we are. We are inside the car. This is the B pillar. Uh, what we just looked at outside. Um, and I wanted to point out a couple things. Um, so this is a, a pretty, pretty big part of the structure of the car. It kind of ties in the upper half of the B pillar to the lower part of the B pillar, and. It's, it's held together here. Let's back this uh, seat belt out of the way if I can here. Here we go. It's held together here with two spot, two spot welds. That's it. Top and the bottom is, is all. And then there's a couple of spot welds here. But there's a lot of force. I mean, and I think on the other side, the driver's side, when I looked at it, it was, it was even less there. It, it really was not much, not much holding it together. Um, and if we peel this off, um, oh, hi, girl. You startled me. <laughs> oh, you're funny. She came to see what I was doing. <laughs> that really, that got me good. Um, so this whole, this whole upper and lower assembly is tied together with this little piece of sheet metal here. And it's, it's got two spot welds in it, top and bottom. So I, I really feel that this contributes a lot to what's going on on the outside of the car here. And why, why like, like directly, well, just outside here is where these cracks are forming. <clears throat> so the simple solution here is I'm just going to grind these down, you know, like, and uh, I'm just going to stitch across here to, to strengthen these up. 
Now we have to do something on the outside to uh, to show or to repair uh, what is going on with the crack. We can't let it go any further. Um, so I'm going to show you guys how we fix that. We do we weld it, but there's a technique that we can use to keep it keep the cracks from growing. So let's get started. So first thing we're going to do is I'm just going to just use the grinding wheel and just knock this down to to fresh paint or bare metal. can see how flexible this is just by me working it with my hands. All right, I decided to get the seat belt. I just got it out of the way. I took it off and got it out of the way. And I'm looking at this a little bit more and I'm wondering if there's not something to do with this huge expanse that we have here that um, it's basically just a huge open area to have this whole car flex. <clears throat> so I'm going to think about it for a little bit, but I think that we're going to fill this in with something because it, it all this, you know, there's just a giant door panel or interior panel that covers this whole section. And we could very easily make something that comes in here and fills the, or at least strengthens this area because honestly I know it's a 40 year old car I know in a lot of people's eyes it's a piece of junk but uh, you know I, I want to be able to, to go out and drive this car hard and like you know if I want to go take it on the track or something I want to be able to do that I want to have fun with this car and I'm not at the point where I want to cage it um, I kind of feel like for what I'm going to do with this car and how often I'm going to be using it putting a cage in it is really going to kind of change the whole dynamic of it. Uh, so I'm going to come, I need to come up with a solution for this. And I'll probably do that while I eat lunch today. But for now, I'm going to switch to the outside and I'm going to show you guys how we're going to fix these cracks in the outside. All right, everybody. Uh, this is the part of the show where I wish I had a suction cup mount because then I could just stick you guys on the window and show you guys exactly what I'm doing right here. So our crack in this B pillar right here, it is in the shape of a T. It goes along the body line this way and then follows the body line this way. So we have to stop the progression of the crack. We can't let it keep going, obviously. So when we weld, um, Especially since I'm the, the type of welder I'm using if I had a really fancy TIG welder uh, The welds are softer easier to work, but I'm working with a MIG welder The welds are a little tougher so the metals more brittle at a on a weld So we have to stop the progression of the crack moving in in all directions So the first thing we're going to do Put some light on this thing here first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to find the, each end of the crack. So I already know that the end of this crack right here, and I'm just putting my little center punch on there because what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back with a small drill bit and drill a tiny hole. Now I know it's counterintuitive, you're trying to stop progression, but you, you're kind of you're kind of giving it like a cul-de-sac it is is it's a really terrible analogy but you're basically giving it a, a rounded end to the crack so it's it's um, it is you're you're dealing with fatigue in the metal and I'm not a metallurgist I don't really know a lot about metallurgy but you're basically you're stopping the fatigue by giving it a rounded point and then we're going to go back through and we're going to fill in the crack with weld. So, and then we'll grind it down and then 
I'll have to figure out a way to blend in a repair, but uh, it, it doesn't matter if it's original paint or not, if it splits all the way down and becomes really super flexy, uh, it, it just makes the car worse in the long run. So we do need to fix this. Um, so I'm going to put another, put another, as you can see, this is really helpful too, especially in a spot like this where it's, it's not easy to even get the punch to stay where you want it. So making that, making that starter for that drill bit really comes in handy because oh, this drill bit would be all over the place. Here, this crack looks to go back to here, the B-pillar, which is pretty significant. It's almost a half inch long overall. It keeps sliding on me. There we go. Okay, so now we've got our, our three points. We've got one here. One here at this end and one here at this end. And yeah, the, uh, the measuring tape isn't handy, but that could be closer to an inch long overall of the, the length of that crack. So now we've got our, just got a really small drill, but it doesn't have to be a monster. You know, you just, you're basically just making a place to start and stop your well. Now, I'll switch over to my little paint stripping wheel here. Knock, knock some old paint off. Just do it real quick here. So now I'll show you guys the crack. You'll probably be able to see a little better. All right, so let me show you guys. So there you can see the length and width of that, that crack. It goes right here. I mean, that's almost, I got some pretty stumpy fingers, and that's almost the width of my finger right there. Um, and then it goes up over the top here, and works its way back the, back the B-pillar. So it's a good thing we're fixing this now while it's, relatively small and easy um, so it's a good thing we're fixing this now while it's re relatively small and easy to deal with so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna get the welder set up and we're just gonna go over that I'll set my welding blanket up over the window so I don't burn up a burn up a perfectly good window especially with the original German Sakura logo on it. <laughs> um, I'd take it out, but I don't want to like store it somewhere. I'm kind of limited on storage right now for room I have to put stuff, so it's less likely to get broken while it's still in the car. So I'm going to set up for welding, and then we'll we'll knock this out real quick, and then it's probably going to be time for a lunch break. Okay, so now we are ready to tack these up. We got our window protected. Blue tape's not really, not really holding on there, but um, it'll be fine. We're not going to have it. We're not going to have too much splatter from what we're doing right here. Um, so let's let's fix these. Uh, let's fix this little little issue. So as you can see, it was pretty quick. Uh, I know you guys probably watched it in double time, but it was pretty quick to actually go through once you prepped this area 
to go back and just fix the fix it. Obviously, to grind down this weld and prep it and get some paint on it is going to take some time, but you can see now. Oh, let's see here. You can see now that it's it's all welded like it should be. I need to go through and clean it up with a wire brush or a scotch brite or something. And I'll probably have to, I still need to grind that down flush and figure out why I got such a big peak on that one spot. Um, I may have to go through and do another little touch up weld there. But, um, so that's it for now. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna grab some lunch and probably some more sheet metal because I, I think I figured out a way uh, in the meantime to uh, repair or strengthen this inside uh, make it a little stiffer uh, and it won't be won't be difficult and since we're right here doing it I might as well might as well fix that big cavern with something make it a little stronger hey everybody so I kind of left you out of the loop this afternoon. I had to run around and get some extra sheet metal. I ran out. I didn't have enough for the project I was going to do here, so I had to run down to the sheet metal store and buy, buy some more. Um, so first I'm going to show you what I made, and then I'll go back and show you how I made it. So this is what I came up with. This is something that will fit in right here. Like so. <laughs> It'll fit in right here. There, I kind of wedged it in there so it stays in there this time. So, obviously we're going to weld this piece in. But I wanted to make something that didn't weigh a lot because this car is fairly light to start with. But I wanted to be able to reinforce this area. So I came up with this idea to, so it will sit underneath the door panel all the way around, or the, the interior panel. It'll sit flush with the, with the outside, or the, the inside of the car here. Um, and I put a, a strengthening rib down in the center here. It was pretty flexy with just a flat piece of metal. So. I cut a little extra and folded this over on either side and then uh, uh, all I have to do now is just grind the paint back a little bit, grind all the places where I'm going to weld on here and weld it in. So I can still get through to here if I need to you know, put sound deadening in or whatever, um, but it will, it should, like, it should strengthen up this whole little area here and it, it doesn't weigh hardly anything I mean I could I could probably stand to lose the amount of weight that this thing actually is so um, so we'll get back out of the car I'll show you how I actually made it. First thing I'm going to do is I already traced out the pattern onto here just going to cut out around the edge with my shears Alright, now I'm going to use my cutting wheel just to cut the centers out. This is all pretty basic for any of you that have kind of done this stuff before.
as you can see, it's pretty floppy right now. I wouldn't expect too much. I don't know if you can see how much that's flexing, but I wouldn't expect too much strength from that. So what we're going to do is I'll take my jigsaw and make a couple little cuts here. I just basically went the depth of the blade as a measurement. So, um, it doesn't have to be super deep, it's just got to be effective. So, now we're going to go through, we're going to start to bend these up here. Now I know I have a sheet metal break, but you can't bend stuff like this with a sheet metal break. Just, just doesn't work. Now, I'm going to finish up by hammer and dolly. Make it look good. There we go. Now, it's definitely, definitely more stiff, and I may even go through on these sides, right here, and right here, and I can put in another set of these little, uh, just make some stiffening ribs. Um, thought about making a solid panel and doing some flanged holes in it, but I just don't have the tooling for it. This seemed like the easiest option, so I'm going to finish this up. I'm, I'm going to put a couple more strengtheners in here and uh, probably just vertical ones because it seems like it's pretty, pretty solid. It seems like it's just the the up and down ones that need a little bit extra help so okay so while you guys were gone probably getting a beverage or something I uh, I decided to go through and finish all the ribs on the inside fold it over each of the each of the, cut it back a little bit folded them over makes it makes it way stiffer I think once these are welded into the car, they're actually going to contribute to the stiffness of the chassis, which was the whole point of this exercise. So, you guys have seen them setting in the car. Um, I will, uh, I will probably not tack these in right away, but you guys have seen how they're made. Uh, pretty, pretty straightforward to to do. It's not a not a dif difficult job. Um, you know, I just did some little bit extra that you probably hadn't thought about, just folding over the edges to make them a little bit stronger. So, um, so there's my take on stiffening the rear of a rabbit without doing a roll cage. Um, there's some other things I want to try along the way, and I'll show you what I'm doing along the way, and and hopefully, uh, hopefully you guys enjoy it. Maybe you'll even make your own. Um, please don't like copy me and sell them because that would be lame like like you saw me make these you know what date i made them on um at least cut me in on the profits if you're going to do it so um so that's kind of all i have for today um next time i'll uh i'll have the i'll have some other stuff that i'm working on um 
We're not going to get back to the back seats right away. I'm having a hard time finding some extra fabric. I don't want to take the rear seat apart until I find the extra fabric to put it all together. Um, so the back seat's kind of on hold right now. I figured there's plenty of other stuff we're going we're gonna to need to do. I need to get this car back on the ground. Uh, so suspension's going to go on uh, here pretty soon. Suspension and wheels. Uh, and uh, so I can get it on the ground. It's super dusty, the stuff I'm going to do on the floor. You know, I need to go through and like clean up the rest of the floor pan so I can get it ready to put a coating on it. And it's super, super gross to do that. It's just wire wheel and grinder, flap wheel, all that kind of stuff. It just gets super nasty. So what I really like to be able to do is roll it out in the driveway. Uh, and uh, to do that, I got to put suspension back on. So that's probably going to be what we're going to cover in the next episode is putting some suspension on here, throwing the wheels I have. I've got some, some beater wheels I picked up from Craigslist. Um, I'm going to throw those on and get it ready so I can roll it out in the driveway and uh, make a mess outside instead of inside. So that's today. That's our episode. Making some stiffening braces for the inside of your rabbit. Um, and I have some, like I said, I have some other ideas um, as we go. We're probably going to make some more stuff like this. And uh, hopefully you enjoyed it. Hopefully you can get the wheels turning in your head and you can come up with some ideas on your own of how to uh, how to make your car a little bit stiffer so until next time thanks for watching throttle grotto and get out there and work on something